So this is the Autel Max 4T. We are very lucky at Edinburgh Drone Company to get this drone early to fully test it, put it through its paces and bring this full review straight to you guys. So this UAV was first officially introduced at CES around four months back, uh, but it's finally here for mass release. I've had a full week with it to trial and test its capabilities. I will also be doing multiple videos on this, including the new version 3 smart controller and the new Autel Enterprise app within it, going through all the settings. Then I will also be touching on the waypoints and mapping mission options with this drone. And also finally, a video fully testing it at night and the new night mode. So if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Please bear in mind, um, before we quickly get onto it, it's newly released and as with a lot of tech and especially drones, there are certain features that aren't quite here yet or aren't fully polished as of this review. We have been told that Autel are bringing updates out every two weeks at the start, which I think is great, so we should hopefully slowly see everything that was promised. However, saying that, most of it's here and it's pretty awesome. Okay, let's start with the physical attributes of this drone, as that's the initial exciting part. The size is something many people have been questioning, and it's unlike any other drone on the market in terms of this unique build and size. For a quick comparison here, you can see it's bigger than your classic Mavic, but smaller than an M30, uh, which we don't have at the moment, so here is an M300 for comparison. It weighs 1,620 grams, or three and a half pounds, it has an IP rating of 43. For those who may not know, the IP code standing for International Protection Rating, sometimes also Ingress Protection Rating, consists of the letters IP followed by two digits where the first number represents how it tests against solid objects such as dust and sand. The second digit relates to how it protects itself from liquid, so when it starts to rain during your flight. In a quick comparison, the M30 by DJI has an IP55 rating and can be left out in pretty heavy rain and harsh conditions. So 43, you'll need to be careful, but it simply can't be left out in the elements. But we'll save the full comparison between the M30, those two massive titans, for another video. It has a max wind speed of 12 meters per second, or 27 miles per hour, an operating temperature of minus 20, all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, and quite surprisingly, there weren't any very windy days to test this, nor any extremely hot or cold days. But I did fully test the flight time, which has been marketed as 42 minutes. Autel has a fairly good reputation with upholding their flight time with the recent Light Plus, and this is just as good. With a mix of hovering and flying, I got 32 and a half minutes before it returned to home after 15% battery. It still had 14% and could have gone for another couple minutes. So anything getting over 30 is pretty astounding, and especially a craft of this unique size, but it's also sort of become the expected with recent drones. You'll notice there's no sideways sensors, but this obstacle avoidance has been described a bit differently as 720, so 360 around the front and 360 around the side. The sensors look similar to 360 cameras, so that should give you an idea of how it works. It has what is called millimeter wave radar, a new concept to small UAVs. It allows for better obstacle avoidance at night as it can see what the cameras and the human eye can. This is still to be fully released with an update, so we haven't had time to test it so you're just going to have to take Autel's word for it. So one of the biggest features, especially in the current age of drones, is that it has GPS denied. Therefore, it stops any interference issues and to some degree anti-jamming, as well as being able to operate in troublesome environments, which is what you will need for a drone of this caliber and capability. It even offers a single battery hot swap, a first in the industry, an important feature when time is of the essence in an emergency service or rescue situation. It also means you aren't spending as much on pairs of batteries, worrying about getting them both to the same charge, and it's of course lighter for any form of transport. Also important when we come onto the mesh network. Now unfortunately this wasn't available during our testing again, but it looks like it works with a small onboard battery that keeps the drone running for about 30 seconds while you change the battery. One of the newest and most exciting features is the mesh network. 
named by Autel as the AMESH, a system designed for working together with other drones to perform a task. You may have seen similar technology with drone shows and drone displays where they have lights and they make things in the air. So basically it's helping move multiple drones together. And this is not just for command and control, moving information between the drone as well, in between each individual drone. So on your controller, you can look at the different feeds of multiple drones. It allows you to cover and search a large area while bridging the gap between old communication styles of talking over radios to multiple pilots to where you can quickly see exactly what you're looking for. It's like a relay style of working between multiple aircraft and it's quite incredible. Also with the pinpointing capabilities, everyone piloting a drone can see other pins to help converge onto the same area or know where a drone point of interest may be that someone else has spotted. And you're doing all this while not having to be connected to a network. It can also connect and share information with other drones from the Autel fleet such as the highly advanced VTOL UAV Dragonfish. So we finally come on to the camera externals and the reasoning behind the name Max 4T, standing for the four sensors and the T representing the thermal or infrared camera, which indicates future payloads with different purposes. There has already been a night payload released and discussions about a mapping specific payload. One of the most exciting features is the swappable payload option that isn't normally available with drones of this size. There is no ribbon cable, which I've been told by some of the lads that do repairs here at EDC is a great change. It means if you crash, you can just swap cameras, no coding, no complete drone replacement. This should be the future. Okay, while we're on it, let's move on and discuss the 4T payload. So going through all the sensors, at the bottom left you have a 4K resolution with an acclaimed 50 megapixel wide angle lens. It has a max ISO of 64,000, but we'll come on to night footage and features later. It has an 85 degree field of view, so equivalent to 23 mil. Now right now there is no selectable wide angle lens, it is simply what is used when you are fully zoomed out. If you start to zoom in you will see a bit of a jump or switch onto the zoom camera at around three times. So this brings us nicely onto the zoom camera, which has an 8K resolution, a 10 times optical zoom, and a 160 times digital zoom. It's the equivalent of 64 mil to 234 mil in camera terms. It has a max ISO of 6400. You can jump between focal lengths, a scroll on screen, or scroll using the right wheel at the top right of your controller. Is it on the same level as the M30H22E? No is the short answer, but you've got to think of it as having the next best zoom lens out there for a considerably better price. It's certainly stronger than any of your smaller drones, such as any Mavic Enterprises. It's great up until you go beyond optical and into digital. So this isn't the sort of drone you would leave just hovering above you. It's there to fly closer and use the zoom to really check the close-up details as opposed to looking for anything extremely far away. Don't get me wrong, this zoom is incredible. It will serve whatever purpose you may need it for, whether it be inspections or search and rescue scenarios, as well as anything in between. Now, working upwards from the zoom lens, we have the thermal camera in the top right, where the T and 4T comes from. This lens is a 640 by 512 sensor, as well as a 16 times digital zoom. It has 10 color palettes, ranging from white hot, iron bow, heat detection, it's got them all. You can use a box to find the hottest and coldest points in a small area or a large area. The infrared settings are extremely customizable and you can choose your contrast, brightness, image enhancement, emissivity, a specific temperature alarm and even a specific isotherm reading to look for, whether it be human, fire or a custom temperature range. This is an extremely impressive thermal setup for this size and price of drone and I found it also very user friendly, which is exactly what you want. For something that may seem a bit alien to some people at first. Okay, the final sensor on this payload is the laser rangefinder at the top left here. An incredible bit of kit that can tell you the exact range and coordinates of what you're pinpointing it from, anything between 5 meters to 1200 meters. I found that anything over 2500 feet and it may struggle, partially due to the loss of quality in the digital zoom of the zoom camera, but overall it's extremely impressive and helps to tie all the cameras together in one neat package. 
Each and every sensor has its purpose on the drone and you can tell that Autel spent a lot of time on the R&D to get this perfect. But it wouldn't all work so well together if it weren't for the new controller and app that brings it all together. So this is the version 3 smart controller that runs off the brand new Enterprise app from Autel. It has a crazy big 7.9 inch touchscreen with a max brightness of 2000 nits. It has an operating time of 2.5 hours with 100% battery and 4.5 hours at 50% battery. It has a charging time of 120 minutes but can also be charged while operating through the Type-C input at the top. It also has an HDMI output for connecting to a TV and a USB input. So if you want to get any screen recording footage, you can plug in your hard drive and grab the footage or images straight away. A feature I am particularly pleased about. It is pretty much a tablet encapsulated in an IP43 rated controller. As I stated earlier, I'll be going into depth on this new controller and app interface in a future video that will be coming out very soon. So if you want to know more, make sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for it in the coming weeks. So within the controller, you can access the feature Active Track, which from what I've seen picks up vehicles and people extremely well. The only thing is there is no way to select a target and track it just yet, but I have no doubt that will be with us soon. There are also waypoints and mapping missions, and I won't go into that too much as that will also be a future video, but it looks extremely impressive. There is an option for split screen for a dual perspective of both your thermal and zoom cameras and even a three-way option to integrate the map. Just remember to connect to Wi-Fi to get a fully accurate view of your area of operation on the map feature. Finally, the last thing to mention is the night mode. I tested this out at night and boy was it impressive. Here's some footage from an iPhone showing you how dark it was and here is some of the footage that I managed to capture on the Max 4T. Using the wide zoom thermal camera and even the laser rangefinder at night to find the distance of this wind turbine you are seeing. It has extremely impressive low light capabilities and an equally impressive light below the drone that makes seeing at night even easier when looking down. I will also be doing a more in depth look into this night mode on this drone in another video. Okay, accessories wise, this drone has a Type-C connector on the top here, as well as two holes for screws for any and all accessories that will become available for this drone, from SDK to RTK and even a light and speaker combo down the line. It leaves an open-ended opportunity for high quality third-party add-ons, such as the CZI LP12, bit of a mouthful, that we often provided with the M30T for any search and rescue teams across the UK. In terms of Autel accessories available now, there is an RTK module and there's also something called Live Deck 2. This can broadcast live mission intel to other personnel in the operation for enhanced situational awareness and critical decision making without the need for LTE connection. So this links back to the AMESH system and will help it all work together. You can even go one further and purchase an EVO Nest system, which is a base for automatic takeoff, landing, charging and mission planning for the EVO series. These accessories are very much for large operation uses of this drone and are not all necessary unless specific to your needs for this drone. In the past, I've often talked about not only the importance but the need for competition in the drone industry. It's no secret that DJI dominates, but for possibly the first time, there's a drone that can not only compete, but possibly outshine in areas. This is that drone. We work closely with search and rescue, emergency services and surveyors across the UK, and they'll be asking about it, and I'll be recommending and discussing this drone with all of them. What sets it apart is its size. It has perhaps found a small gap in the market for a drone of this caliber. The changeable payloads leave it open-ended and keep it future-proof for anyone that decides to invest. At the moment, the price isn't confirmed, but here in the UK, you're looking at around the £8,000 mark, and that's just a ballpark figure. That's not to say it's flawless. There are big features that aren't here yet, so we don't know if they will work out as well as promised. Little things like the map for mission setups, not being able to zoom in or out, I found frustrating. I also know certain rescue teams would want it in orange for an easier visual line of sight, 
so I'll be intrigued to see if other colors come out as they often do with Autel. And to be honest, that's about it. Now, we aren't endorsed by Autel or any other company. We get these drones in ourselves to give honest feedback to you, the viewers. But I simply think this is a really smart, unique, and even groundbreaking piece of drone tech. It may not be anything new, but it's definitely fresh. Let us know what you think of it down in the comments. Please like and subscribe so we can keep bringing fun and informative videos on the channel. And I'll catch you on the next one.